Hey guys, my final presentation for Graphic Design History 1 will be about Hannah Hawk. This semester, we briefly talked about Hannah during the data movement in the early 20th century. I picked Hannah because I wanted to learn more about her since she was one of very few female artists present at the time. And with that, let's get started. Okay, so first, as a short review, the data movement revolved around artists essentially deciding the World War I made no sense and so their art shouldn't either. Data had a type of style where typography and photo montage were being used along with combining a variety of big and small letters with different styles, fonts, and colors. Hannah Hoff was a German artist born on November 1st, 1889 in Gotha, Germany. She was known for her collages and photo montages. While in Berlin in 1917, Hannah met artist Raoul Hussmann. They were not only together for a significant amount of time, but they also were members of the Berlin Data Group. A year after Hannah had joined this group, she had her work displayed at the first international data fair in Berlin in the year 1920. Despite the patronizing views from her own peers, she received great feedback and praise. Now let's talk about Hannah's work. She created work that not only criticized society, but also the socially constructed roles that women were given. Using her art, Hannah embraced both diversity and differences and even went against society to question its own ideology of beauty standards. Her metaphorical references challenged the traditional domestic role of females. And so Hannah made her voice as a woman be heard in an art world that was dominated by men. Unfortunately, on May 31st, 1978 in Berlin, she passed away. Quick side note, I do have trouble pronouncing her last name, so I will call her by her first name. Now let's take a look at her photo montages, starting off with her most recognized one that we actually took a look earlier this semester at, which is called Cut with the Data Kitchen, Knife Through the Last Wilmer Beer Belly Cultural Epoch in Germany, which was created in 1919. It's a basically a collage that had a lot of pieces that reflected her political and social views. It's important to know that this has so much information in it, but we will talk about one particular message. And another fun fact that this piece of art of hers was exhibited in the first international data fair that we talked about earlier, and it was reportedly one of the most popular pieces in the show. In terms of scale, this is what the collage looks like next to a bench that's 8 feet. So it's pretty large, while well, compared to her other artwork that we will cover later on, it is 44 by 35 inches, so it's pretty big. Before we go on, it's important to note that this collage was actually split into two sections, the left being data and the right being anti-data. Let's take a closer look at the highlighted section now. Hannah did not sign this photo montage, but instead, as you can see, added her face. Aside from putting herself on the anti-data side, this carried another message. It's the fact that her head is pasted on the upper left side of the map that displays the countries in Europe where women had the right to vote, showing us as the viewer her own political views on gender equality. The father, which was created in the year 1919, showcases a man's head on a woman's body while cradling a baby. Here, Hannah is seen exploring and challenging the gender roles as well. Another fun fact is that when Hannah submitted her work for the first international data fair, artists like Hartfell tried to have her work removed. But the fact that she was dating Hausman at the time um, also allowed her in since he was a leading member of the group and he even tried to withdraw his own work if they didn't allow her to participate. Um, but anyway, this, for example, is another collage of hers that she did. It's called Dad Dandy. It's a composition that's filled with a lot of photos that at first glance, you're able to see women full of jewelry and fashionable clothing. However, when taking a closer look, you're really able to see how the women are in monochrome, illustrating the sense of inequality between men and women in Berlin, but you're also able to see the hypocrisy of German society, how it wanted to demonstrate the idea that women and men were equals, even though they were not, 
and that is why the woman created a silhouette of a man at the end. And it's also so interesting how Hannah played with the title, naming it D Dandy, combining both Dada and the word Dandy, which is a man who cares a lot about his appearance. Dada Ernest from 1920 also addresses the inequalities a woman had in Germany at the time. This particular piece, created in 1929, showcases the body of what seems to be an infant combined with a mask and an eye of a modern woman. Here, Hannah questions the standard beauty that the Society of Germany has established, making it a political photo montage. Here, Hannah suggests that society looks at women as if they were exotic, unknown objects. She also questions the position of the new woman, looking at her as a fragmented, constructed image that serves a particular end in society, suppressing and disregarding other possible individual choices and desires. This untitled photo montage was a part of a series that criticized how men idealized and objectified women's bodies. Hannah was able to do this by creating youthful figures that helped point out the patronizing treatment that women constantly had to face. This photo montage called Indian Dancer from 1930 is a figure which is a combination of a film star, a modern woman, and a non-Western woman, which is topped with a crown, which, is, which can be mistaken for royalty, but if you take a closer look at the crown, it's actually made out of kitchen utensils, like forks, spoons, and knives, which symbolize this sense of stereotypes of a housewife. Hannah overall brought a sensitive and sharp feminist eye, producing things and images that addressed the brutal honesty of inequalities that women were facing at the time in Berlin, Germany. So with that, these are my works cited in my image sources. Thank you for watching.